Today's episode is sponsored by G2A, Gate to Adventure. Now this offers digital entertainment, software to video games, gift cards from Amazon, Netflix. It offers instant delivery and it's got products at discounted prices. And it started on the 22nd of March and it goes all the way to the 14th of April. So get on there quick. You get a big discount. You get a discount on games, you get great offers and you get special limited time on daily deals. Uh, with the spring sale, there's a lot of great games. There's games like Helldivers 2. You guys like Star Wars? They got Star Wars. Check that out. I mean, come on. They have WWE. They got Hogwarts Legacy. They got tons of stuff. There's so many games over there, and there's so much to browse around, enjoy. They have Knights of the Republic, guys. They have Knights of the Republic. Now, if you want to get a discount, you want to get 10% off, you got to use the code G2A Spring and you'll get 10% off. You'll get 10% off when you spend up to 25 euros. You got 15% off when you spend over 25 euros. And you'll get 20% off when you spend over 50 euros. So check it out, guys. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Friday. It's Capes and Cows. It's myself, Winston, and Chris Carr. Bye, Coy. Coy's in <laughs> Vegas, um, and he'll be back next week. But we got, we're blessed. We got Chris Carr last week. We got her yesterday. And we got her back today. So that's the show, man. It's me, Winston, and Chris. And we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. And everybody's talking about this X Men '97, the latest episode, episode six, I think. Five, five. That's what I meant. And episode five. And man, people are losing their minds over this episode. So we'll talk about it, and we'll see if it is worth the hype. There will be spoilers on that one. So if you haven't seen it. You know, we're going to have to time code it. Uh, there was stuff at CinemaCon, and James Gunn sent in a little video and showed, like, the logo for, you know, the official logo, I guess, for the suit for um, Superman. So we'll talk about that. Uh, so that and more on today's show. So if you're brand new to the channel, you've never been here before, subscribe to it. We're trying to get to 200,000 faster than we got to 100, but we need you guys to hit that button. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on all that stuff. So, let's do it. It's Capes and Cows. It's myself. It's Chris Carr. It's Winston. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Capes and Cows. Myself. Chris Carr. Winston A. Marshall. Here we go. I don't know what that was. I, I liked it. It was a good move. It was move. very powerful. It was powerful. Trying to you do were allowed I, uh, to just like come yeah. in. It was, a, yeah. The, yeah, throw a Pokeball. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. turn, the, turn the hat backwards. and Yeah. So I hope everybody's doing good right now because we're going to start talking about some stuff. Uh, and we'll start off. I, what, what I will say is I told you guys beforehand uh, as we were talking off air that, you know, they know now with the move to New York and all that. So what we've been doing, and one of the things that you and I have talked about is that we're probably going to have you and Coy at your at your spot, and then Brett's going to help kind of, we'll, we have a lot of this equipment that will probably help you guys set up the shot, get the lighting. You have great stuff at your place anyway, but we can start to do maybe some soundproof and some stuff over there. Yeah, too. no, we'll definitely, I mean, especially because I still have a construction zone outside my apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure all that out, but like one of the things that we're doing is because we got, we had... This whole thing, when we'd started this the the studio, mm-hmm. we had an Amazon wish list, and that the fancy you know we have the Nate lights. I talk about the Nate lights mm-hmm. all the time. We have a new Amazon list up for the New York studio that we just put up, and there was a bunch of patrons like, "You're going to start a New York list?" And I was like, "Yeah, we should." So we, we put that up now, and but people are like, "What about this stuff? That's going. This is going to go. A lot of this stuff is going to go to the crew because we're going to set up you and Coy. We're going to have Mike and Steph in the same room, and then." So it's going to, that way the dynamic is, is still there. So when people are wondering, and then we're going to have more stuff. Chris and I have been talking, I've been talking about uh, something to do. We haven't, it's not official yet. So we're still talking about it, but it's exciting. Um, we're just taking that idea out for coffee still. That's exactly we're right. We're not committing to it. <laughs> not yet, but we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, but either way, we, we, Chris will be doing more stuff with us regardless. Yeah. We'll just got to figure out you I know, love exactly what it is. Yeah, Me so, too. Yeah. I, I hate that he decided to move, though. That means I only get to see you, though. It's probably this one time. That's maybe not true. Time. Like, Why? Well, hopefully we'll do more stand-up, too. I mean, I, I had so that. much fun at that. I, I, right? Yeah. No, but I'm, you just went against my whole point. My whole point is that we set up. Your thing, and let's say like Coy's out of town. Uh, that's true. Uh, Chris, yeah, dude, that's, yeah, that's yeah. totally true. Yeah, because yeah. Chris is pretty much like uh, right now. She's she's got the ultimate utility player. Like it's if like if Brett's out, call Chris. Roxy's out, call Chris. Listen, Coy's out. Yeah, that's what I try to do for voiceover. It's what I want to do for movie and yeah, comedy yeah. news. Let's go. You're in. I mean, You're in. Well, then uh, by all means, if Coy's back next week, you can you can be here for me. Yeah, that's, that's, Are you out next week? That's that's part of what I. Oh, okay, okay. So you're out next week. 
Want to do the show next week? Sure. All right. Chris is going to be on next week, week too, guys. No, it's all good. It's all good. I'm all right. glad to know that we have a six uh, six woman off the bench, man. Yeah. This is great. That's We we hadn't had one for Capes and Cows. No. So it's, because yesterday, it was funny because it, it takes, a, you have to have a certain knowledge to mm. do this particular show, right? Mm. And then, because I'm the person that kind of throws to you guys and I get the information back. And I, and I know how well she knows the world. And yesterday, I'm like, wait a minute, Corey's not here. Hell, you want to do the show? She's like, yeah. I was like, hell yeah. Let's Dude, do it. That's, yeah. And that's the, the funny thing is, is that, you know, I know a decent amount. I don't know nearly as much as Koi, but I, I know people are always like, man, I was supposed to actually know. And now that we're getting into this X Men territory, like everything that we're going to talk about with episode five, like, I, there's a reason that, like, I not only started bawling my eyes out, but, like, I was just like, oh my God, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. Yes. So, yes. all right. Well, let's, we, we get into that. So, I'm going to bring that up right now. We're talking about X-Men 97, the the episode. But if you want to and you can contribute to the New York list, it's there. Take a look. If not, that's cool. You can just put your likes in there and your comments in there. That helps a lot, too. Okay, here we go. Here's the, the episode. X-Men 97 fire showrunner Bo DeMeo breaks a silence by sharing his new insights into the 9-11-inspired episode. X-Men 97 showrunner Bo DeMeo was fired by Marvel Studios and Disney Plus before the series premiered, but now he's broken his silence on Remember It by sharing some fascinating insights into the episode. So in yesterday's episode, again, spoiler, spoiler. If you haven't seen this episode, I would wait and look at the time code for the next one. Here, you've been warned. In yesterday's episode of X-Men 97, Sentinels laid waste to Genosha, leading to the shocking deaths of characters like Magneto and Gambit. Time travel may ultimately retcon those deaths, but if so, that runs the risk of lessening the stakes of this team's future adventures. Shortly before X-Men 97's two-episode premiere, we had learned that Bo DeMeo had been fired by Marvel Studios. There was no reason that was given, though we'd later hear it might have been related to his problems behind the scenes or even the filmmaker's non-nude OnlyFans account. While DeMeo has yet to break his silence on that, he did take to X shortly after a Remember It drop to comment on the harrowing events seen in this episode. Responding to dozens of fans to thank him for their support and praise, DeMeo dropped some interesting tidbits confirming that Gambit is dead and sharing insights into the sheer amount of work that went into telling this story. He also revealed, My plan was the first half of the season is the OG audience pre-9-11 Days rife with nostalgia and comfort, then 9-11, like Tulsa and other mass tragedies, turned the world upside down and reminded us the, the whole world's unsafe. Needless to say, we expected the second half of the season to make for heavy viewing. While comic book readers will be familiar with the attack and who the culprit was eventually revealed to be, there's nothing to say that X-Men 97 will necessarily head down that route. There are already big differences. Cable's unexpected appearance, for example... Mm. So expect more surprises in the weeks ahead. So you can see more of his response on of the Remember It in on his Twitter account. Um, okay, so let's talk about this episode. Uh, I I saw the I saw yours first. Saying how much you this is like one of the best episodes of TV. And you're not the only person that said this. There's so many people saying it was one of the best episodes of television ever. I'm not going to go that far, which is fair. But I'm going to say it's a really good show. It's, it's a really good episode, rather. I I think. The one, obviously, the one thing in its favor is obviously doing 97. You were building nostalgia in anyway. So you're already, you have the emotional depth because yeah. most of the people watching this have super fond memories of it from their childhood, sure. yeah. which leans further into what he was saying about what he wanted to do with the 9 11 mm -hmm. thing. He specifically even said in his breakdown, I, I read through it, um, that that was his original pitch to Feige. That this episode was the pitch of, uh, you know, I want to bring it back. This is going to be a linchpin moment. And Feige immediately was like, yes, go. Um, I think what is so fascinating about it is that you took an episode where so much happened. So you're talking about all of the relationship stuff. So Scott's like, Astral plane cheating on Gene mm -hmm. with Madeline, but it's like that's your baby mama. That's got to be really confusing how yeah. that works. Yeah. Um, you have the whole love triangle between Gambit and Magneto, mm -hmm. and and the fact that she can't touch him, and she can't yeah. touch him. Yeah. But then she makes the decision after that dance. She's like, no, Gambit is the one I want to be with. So, but then at that moment, it's already too late. Right. Um, let alone to have this massacre, um, which for those that aren't familiar, comes from uh, E is for extinction. Uh, back in 2001, I believe it was, 
Um, and it was a similar type of situation where Genosha had kind of set itself up as a safe haven for mutants, and then here come these wild sentinels. Mm-hmm. Uh, how spoiler do I want to go with the comic as far as who I think's behind it? Is that are we doing do that? Do it because I want to talk about it. Okay, yeah, you might as you might as well because like I've already warned people and sure. I won't remember anyway. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the original uh, event was actually orchestrated by uh, Casanova. Uh, sorry, Cassandra, Cassandra Nova. Yeah, I, I, my brain just did a fusion. Cassandra Nova, who is uh, Professor X's evil twin um and she's crazy she's absolutely crazy but she essentially takes um uh you know in the beginning the first episode we saw uh trask and um oh my god trask and why is my brain not working the doctor and then from which we're talking about episode one the the, the, the two people that are in charge of the sentinels boulevard trask and and um it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the two people that are behind the sentinels they're still trying to build their stuff back up and whatnot. And we saw that there was, he had a master mold head that he was like working mm-hmm. with and yes. whatever. Essentially, Cassandra finds this like South American like Sentinel facility and decides to use that and take these Sentinels to just go train wreck Genosha. And that's so what they're, not, ended up. they're not coming in from the future. Like, like that's that's what I started because I because I watched days to me, it reminded me of Days of Future Past. Sure. That's when I started seeing that in the beginning, or not beginning, after Cable comes in and he's like, I'm sorry, Mom, and he pulls back, and then they all start come, start flying in there. I'm like, this reminds me of the beginning of Days of the Right, Past. right, right, right. Sure. I, I, I doubt that that is what it is. I think it's more Cable knowing that that's a linchpin time yeah. moment, that he would try to go and stop it, but he was like, I'm out of time, I can't, I gotta go. And like, especially because what his computer body slid him yeah, out of there, yeah, so yeah. he couldn't. Um, but... I think some of the things that were so incredible to see, uh, the, uh, at one point, the Watcher can be seen in the sky, yes. which is absolutely crazy. Oh, really? I had to go yeah. back and rewind it, because yeah. I was like, am I hallucinating what's happening? I, I was like, I, I turned around, because I was like, is somebody in my room? And then I was like, I paused it, I was like, that's the fucking Watcher. Yeah, it and looks like a glare. It's yeah. so well done. And it's really well done, but as for anybody that's watched from What, what If, if yeah. that, I didn't that's, notice that, yeah. Yeah, so that was super cool. When does that happen? Uh, around minute 20 ish, some in there. It's oh, right, the before the, right before the right before the gala and like uh, oh, okay. and all that. Like as they're like kind of panning in, doing Into the, the establishing Genosha. shot yeah. on Genosha, you can see him essentially ready to watch another massive event because that's what he does. Yeah. Um, so to have that. Um, to have the callback for one of Gambit's lines from the original show as he dies, he would, uh, you know, occasionally when he would attack people, he'd be like, the name is Gambit, remember it. And so for him to use that as his going out line felt very Tony Stark, Stark, I am Iron Man, which was a beautiful kind of sentiment. And I also think, um, because in this, uh, in E for Extinction, this is supposedly when Magneto died, but then he was alive at another point. I think probably what ended up happening because he had Leech with him, I think that he was able to fend off the attack and then he told Leech to immediately sap him of his powers, so it looks like he doesn't exist anymore. So I think that Magneto's alive, but I do think that Gambit is dead. And okay. I hate everything about that, but I thought that it was a beautiful moment. And to have the final callback of Rogue saying, I, I can't feel you, both from the standpoint of not being able to feel his powers because she like put her skin to him. Yeah. But for those that watch WandaVision, that's what Wanda actually did when she went to go visit Vision uh, at uh, uh, the sword base. Mm-hmm. She was trying to sense him, and she said the same thing in tears. I can't feel you. So there were so many moments where you could see they were connecting the dots yeah. with things that we've already seen in the MCU, whether or not this is directly connected to it or not, to things directly in the comic to fully adapt these stories and make them relevant to now and to really pull on our heartstrings to like have Nightcrawler who has finally come into his own and then already he's, we, I spent half the time being like, please don't kill Nightcrawler. Please don't kill Nightcrawler. Yeah. And then they killed Gambit and I was like, I, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot. So uh, Chris, the, fir- <laughs> the first question is I want to hear your thoughts on the episode entirely, the same, same way that Winston did yeah. for sure. But I also want to start with the question of, is this the best episode of Marvel television? That has been put out so far because that's been thrown out there too. It might be. Okay. I mean, this is a WandaVision tier level event. This is so well done. And honestly, the big thing for this is it shows you it's a blueprint for how you can adapt comic books mm-hmm. in such a meaningful way. X Men has always fired best when it combines amazing action and philosophy. Mm-hmm. And this episode has that in spades. Dude, when 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 the UN leader was like, I, we don't normally elect terrorists as leaders for countries, yes. and he goes, so why do a lot of your leaders act, act like, like terrorists? terrorists? I yeah. said, yo, you can't, yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> okay. It's so good. The whole monologue that Scott Summers has. Yeah. Too, uh, thank God we're not like you because if we were, you'd be dead. Yeah. Oh. That's some real. 
There is <sighs> there is such Cyclops just like goodness in this show, and he needed that. Cyclops is a character who gets shit on constantly because he's always just involved in you know all these different love triangles and everything. Because all the X Men always <laughs> 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 everybody <laughs> seeing everybody. Yo. And he's usually kind of put into that James Marsden as yeah. as every James Marsden right. role typically mm-hmm. is. As he's the other guy, mm-hmm. and it's so nice to see him get that kind of redemption, which is great. The Gambit stuff too is a juicy little comic book nod too, because back in Uncanny X Men three fifty, I want to say, we have Gambit lead the uh, leave Sinister to where the Morlocks are. Mm-hmm. He gives them up, mm-hmm. and so that was a beautiful kind of redemption moment. If you do know that backstory, mm-hmm. but you don't need to know it to enjoy right. the show. And I think that's what's so great is it's so human and beautiful and timely without having to have deep, deep lore of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my most devastating revelations though was I was watching this and I was like, oh man, me and Magneto have the same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is where Magneto yeah. has been. We yeah. both went to a beta and we were like, butterfly layers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank but, you. But you were, but you were, because you you and I talked about it because you knew that you were coming on today and you had seen episode four, yes. which I thought was okay, by the way. Episode I liked four. it. I, I just fun. think, I, I think, I think again, the philosophy Part I love the little nods too, and they, they've four. done it twice now for four. four. Yeah. They've done it twice now. The Magneto was right situation. So it, for those that aren't familiar with that, again re- revolving around this event, this idea that Magneto kept being like the humans will do nothing. It's like they're gonna murder us. We like need to fight for ourselves. We can't keep doing this. So then all of a sudden you had a kid at Xavier's Institute years after this uh, mm-hmm. like extinction event, and. He's wearing a T-shirt that looks like the Che uh, Cavera, whatever, that just says Magneto was right, has Magneto's yeah, yeah, helmet, yeah. and then Magneto was right on it. And you see and, posters, too. And then they start popping up everywhere. But that, was for, but that was in episode five. Well, it happened in four because there was, Magneto said uh, at the beginning when Jubilee was like, you know, they're like, she's turning 18, she should have a birthday party. Right. He goes, no, she can train because the world doesn't give a shit about yeah. her turning 18. Yeah. They're going to kill her. And they were like, come on, man. And so... She gets upset about it. She goes in the video game. Yeah, when she's right. talking to the older version of herself, she's like, I know this idea of living in a world that's already cut out for you yeah. and you know how it ends and you have the nostalgia is a good thing, but that's dangerous. You need to step out into the world and you need to grow. Otherwise, you are stunted growth and you could even like potentially die. And she goes, so Magneto was right. And I was like, that was a very subtle nod to that, but they keep doing that. Mm-hmm. And so then when they arrive at Genosha, yeah. it says Magneto is right as far as like we can do, we can have the peace, whatever, whatever, which is now going to fully end up having that phrase right. of Magneto was yeah, right that about them, you know. And yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Leading up to it, too, I honestly did have a little bit of a pacing problem with this show mm. of everything's just getting wrapped up in really timely fashions. But then when you hit this one, you go, oh, it all makes sense. And especially with him saying Everything prior to this was pre 9 11. So I mm-hmm. took you back to the 90s of the, oh man, you know, like X Men and Transformers and like Extreme Man and like, oh, it's all great. And then the world genuinely changed after 9 yeah. 11, which is the same thing for like all of us, but Gen Z now with COVID. Everything was as it was. Right. Pandemic hits, everything Different. shifts. Yeah. Um, so I thought that that was a beautifully executed vision Mm -hmm. because everything that's also been said from some of the team that wrote on it and stuff like that is like you think five was bad like for the last five episodes they said they've been they've already been like because that's the point since it's now a post 9 11 world right so well you mentioned this so I, I'm going to be completely honest. You didn't follow a lot of it. So you talk about the Magneto stuff. He's he's this and he's charged his power, turned his powers off, and then somebody gave him a, All good. a pink slip. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but what I did get out of that is that he's probably not dead, right? Do you think he's going to come back? I think Magneto's going to come back. Okay. Honestly, okay, no one's perma dead typically mm-hmm. in these things. Typically, no one's perma dead. Do I think Gambit might be perma dead? Yeah, yes. sadly. Which I, is devastating. Yeah, we got that conversation. Which is so, so devastating. And to your point, too, Winston, I, I think because of that nostalgia, right, you're able to deliver what Twitter keeps saying of Marvel's Red Wedding just happened. Yes. And you can't do that on any other show five episodes in. Right. You can maybe yeah. kill a character that you love, but you can't have the mutant massacre Mm-mm. without all that other backstory, really, and that kind of familiarity with them initially. And it's right. so, so well executed. Magneto, I do think you're totally right that he, like, shut down that power because Leech there, <gasps> the German goodbye. I started crying there. Um, that was rough. Um, 
oh my gosh, that messed me up so much. Yeah. But I think yeah. too, I think, uh, I also think that it, it is Cassandra because why are there, yeah. why otherwise are we seeing those psychic attacks? Oh, which I also, right, because you, you essentially, you had the one other thing that happened and I was trying to figure out what it was. I was like, is Jean still pissed at Madeline that she's still attacking her from afar? And I actually think that that was Cassandra like preemptively attempting to disable the psychics so that they couldn't stop the attack that mm -hmm. was coming. Um, I think that Emma is probably, even though that, so supposedly, <laughs> supposedly uh, the, the showrunner hates Emma Frost. Oh. That, 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 that's like, like apparently a well-known thing. So there's some people that are like, no, she's dead. But then there's others that are like in the original event in the comics. This is where her second mutation kicks in. Where um, you remember in um, yeah, she, she was can in, turn she diamond. was in first class, yeah, right. So she can turn into a diamond form. So that wasn't originally. She was just a telepath, mm. and then this event happened, and in stress, she had a second mutation, and okay. now she could uh, turn into diamond form. And that happened because Colossus had recently died, and so they wanted to have a Colossus character right. still around. So that allowed her to almost bridge the gap of both Jean Grey and Colossus mm -hmm. into one. I'm surprised they never did this storyline in live action. Yeah, I, the the only the only thing though is that you would dedicate almost a whole trilogy to it. I yeah, feel like you can't, still. you know. And and since they since you did the original three movies and you decided we're gonna hard pivot reboot sort of like a kind of a soft mm -hmm. reboot with Days of Future Past and First Class and all that. Days of Future Past tends to be that one um, storyline that everybody knows, right? And so. Better to bank off of that. I just hate that they kept dipping back into the Dark Phoenix well because they kept doing it wrong. They kept doing it wrong, yeah. right? And yeah, so when I, so uh, being very clear, I thought this episode was excellent. That was mm. great. Um, I just always, and I think that's because you guys were also big X Men, uh, the, the series fans, yeah. kind of growing up, right? So I, not that I wasn't a fan, I just didn't watch it. Sure. Right? And then, and it was whether it was just um, after my time. I should say that, I was, that guitar trill. That's what gets well, that's, you. It's like, oh, the song of my people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's go. Did you did you collect the trading cards? Yes. Okay. I had those. I loved and them the, so much. And the, uh, the other thing I forgot about the episode. I, did you did either of you notice at the intro what they keep doing very Rick and Morty style? Or is like you have some stuff that's the same. So like morph shooting at sinister, but then yeah. you have little nods as to what's coming. So they oh. either show something from the past or they show something that has something to do with it. So like. Um, in this one, you had Cable fighting Apocalypse. Mm. So that nodded to us, oh, Cable's going to show up. And then you had uh, Storm beating Callisto to, for leadership of the Morlocks. So it's like, oh, the Morlocks are going to be around. So like, it's they 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 give you hints. I, yeah, see, I, I purposely, though, skipped the intro. <gasps> I No, I do. I quit. I, today I did. Today, last night, I, I skipped the intro because I didn't, wanna, I didn't want any of those tidbits. Right. I didn't want any right. of the previously yawns. I just wanted to go in fresh. Okay. That's, that's why, I can understand That's that. why I went in. I don't normally, like, so, when I saw it, because when I went, I saw the first three episodes in the theater with him. Okay. We had and the screening. <laughs> you hated it. I mean, you love no, the, no, no, no. the content. The, you the, hated the screening. The scre well, because, because <laughs> the grouchy old man came out of me. Uh, and what okay. happened was the people in that theater would cheer at everything. And I don't just mean like the big moments where you should cheer, but like if someone shows up and went, you and, now your here's, face, bro. and now here's, but it's like, and now here's John, the uh, the milkman. <laughs> the milkman, never gonna see him ever again. He's okay. never coming back. But that, oh, I am that person. Cause like Glob shows up in this yeah. episode, right? And I was like, fucking Glob. <laughs> I was like ready to flip tables. Well, this, I was uh, this episode's my mind. different, though. I could see people losing their minds in this one, but it was just like because we were there for three episodes, and like it was like it was because I was trying to. You know what it was? The El Capitan sound is not great. In That's that also theater. true. And it's those true. seats are. Hideous. Right, they suck. They're, they're not, not made for buds. They're not. So I was trying. Not the, modern the, the main, the main frustration came from me trying to listen to what they were saying okay. and then hearing woo every three seconds. And I said, I, and I turned to Winston. And I go, stop this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, too, it was too much. But the episode itself was really good. It was well done. It did remind me right away of X Men Future Past because mm -hmm. of the Sentinels and the way that it was playing. And when Cable showed up, Cable was someone I, I always knew about. Even when they mentioned that they were taking him away, I was like, Oh, it's Cable and it's like, damn, you know you knew what you're talking about. I was, I was like, surprised. Yeah. Well Cable I knew. So Cable I knew well so when he showed up and how that played because when the second he shows up and then the how does she know how does his mom know right away that his name's Cable, that it's Cable like he so Cable has come 
in the original series, Cable comes back a lot. Oh, he because does. he's he's constantly okay. trying okay. to stop Apocalypse. Okay. But they don't know they've never taken the time to figure out to explain who, that it's his son. Who, so she just discovered it with his eyes which, in this yeah. episode. It's, she I saw see. his eyes and it, it she's clicked. She's seen her baby. But she looks into the face of I her see. son. So she finally it's finally revealed that so throughout the whole series, he kept popping up, but in this in this season, we get the actual birth of him. And then he goes, okay, that makes sense. Okay, got it, got it. It's just, it was, it was just layers on layers on layers. Uh, let alone, I love the messy drama of Gene and Scott talking about, are we still in love? And then Logan comes along, and then it's he a just smooch this time around. Yeah, he just goes, there's only one of you ready. She goes, oh, she starts blushing, just kisses him. He's like, the fact that Wolverine, after simping for so long, goes, no, 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 it's Scott Summers a G grade. That's how it is. I gotta go. Like, I was like, dude, this is. Yeah, but I, I, I respected that. Though. I do too. I respected I just... it because not just from the the morality side of it, but the fact that he was like, look, this is not. This is not her and everything that's been going on with this clone thing. This is this is not fair to do. This is not this is not a good win. But what an interesting bit of character discovery, though, of are you your memories or are you your experiences? Right, that's if true. If you've only been told something, if you only have like that recall presented to you in TV format, essentially, do you feel that or are you just supposed to? And it's so cool they're diving into that mm -hmm. of you aren't just your thoughts, you are your experiences, which has more weight and which yeah. actually feels valid wow. to you. Wow, that's, I mean, that's a solid point. And, and I mean, you hear that about people that are dealing with like um, uh, amnesia yeah. and uh, like that whole same situation of potentially re falling in love with somebody or falling in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But again, if we're talking a 9 11 situation, since that is the core of what this episode is, even though this is pre massacre or everything like that, um, you're dealing with the situation of, Okay, I've heard about 9-11. I've heard about Pearl Harbor. I've heard about the assassination of JFK. What does that actually mean to me with someone just showing it me in a history book versus, oh, I lived through right. that. That was, yeah. and that is also the connection you kind of see with Scott and Madeline at this point. It's like, we actually have been living together in love, had a child together right. versus Gene is just like, okay, well, technically you're the OG, but I, I, I did fall in love with that woman, I don't... Yeah, it's yeah. confusing, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, overall, I thought it was a really solid episode, and it has gotten... What it has also done, before we move on, I think what we talked about this briefly on the show mm -hmm. last week, what this has done, especially this episode, has really gotten the interest in the X-Men pumping again, and it does, again, just confirm that once all this silly multiverse stuff is over and done with and the side characters go away and they stop taking these silly swings, it shows you focus on these characters. And it also shows another reason why I believe, and I'll say it until I'm in the freaking grave, that you do certain characters, either it's multiple characters have their own movie leading up to a big X-Men event, put everything you have into the X-Men. This, this proves it. They're so good. Yeah. I mean, one, there's so many of them, but they're so yeah. good. There's such, it's such rich IP. And I'm saying that with Marvel as a whole entity is saying a lot. Mm -hmm. The stuff with X-Men has always been so ripe, so wonderful. Um, I love the internet discourse of like, but they're making X-Men woke now. X-Men has always, always been, been woke. woke. Like, it's what are you talking about? Thing I've ever heard. Since the 1960s. The friends, the friends of humanity? That is an allegory for either the, the Ku Klux Klan back then or the Proud Boys now. What are we talking about? They're literally like, you are scum of the earth. You're not human. We're going to yeah. kill you. It's what? a great, like, show, <laughs> tell me you haven't read the X-Men without telling me you haven't read the X-Men. Come on! It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, either way. It is definitely getting the conversation going. So the question is, what do you guys think? What do you think about the episode? Did you love it? Did you think it was overrated? Do you, are you excited to see where it goes next? Put your comments in there. Let's have a conversation about it. All right, before we move on, I'm very excited to tell you guys, as I always do, about our friends over at Vessi and Roan. Really excited to have them on the show. Here you go. All right, I love getting you guys good deals, and I got it. Roan, there's so much pain and trying to find what to wear. Whether it's uncomfortable, it's tight, it's never your size, there's difficulty putting pieces together when all the fabrics are different textures. I know it happens to me all the time. You wanna look good without having to think about it. Well, that's where Roan comes in. They stepped up to the challenge, everybody. They got the commuter collection. It's comfortable, it's breathable, and it's versatile set of products known to man. 
They have products for every occasion, whether it's the most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos, blazers. They look great as individual pieces, and they work seamlessly together. Roan's signature four-way stretch fabric, it's breathable, it's flexible, and it works everywhere from your commute to work to the 19th hole. It's time for unparalleled confidence without all the hassle. Roan's commuter collection features wrinkle release technology, and it is 100% machine washable, looking good is that easy. I'm telling you, I love this. They sent me some of this stuff, guys. And I, first of all, they have the kind of just relaxing casual stuff, but I needed a good pair of pants to go with my suit. And my goodness, I got some for me. I got some for Riley. We're looking slick. It is so great. The commuter collection is easy to care for also, by the way, and it stays fresh and it's odor free. Just head over to roan.com slash big thing. Use that promo code big thing. Save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash big thing. Use that code big thing. It's time to find your corner office comfort. Vessi. So, John, I got these, I got these new shoes. Um, and they have like it's like rain wear. It's really, really, it's incredible. I love they sent it to me a while ago, but I'm so excited to tell them about them. Like the for us, we I want to tell you that Vessi has like this innovative, it's like footwear and it's designed for spring weather. Um, it's great. So Stormburst Vessies are the ones that I really want to kind of emphasize. And they're your go-to for every setting, city streets, to outdoor adventures, enhancing your style and activity with ease. So you can, whether it's snowy trails, wet streets, morning dew walk. So whether you're facing unexpected snow or slippery paths, it's so crucial in general to have these. Like I've, I'm planning a move. I've talked about this, but it's been raining a lot in LA and I've been wearing my vesties everywhere. And I have, and you guys seen it. I've been wearing the one, the, the, the one hoodie that I had that they sent me. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. I love these hoodies. I've worn it on in, in so many different um, videos. They have all weather, all occasion footwear from beach days to snowy communities. They have so many different things. You should elevate your spring wardrobe when you travel with Vessi's Stormburst shoes. You can discover more at Vessi.com slash big thing. Get your pair today and get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to step out into style. It is great stuff. I love Vessi. Really, really enjoy Vessi. All right. Thank you to our friends over at Vessi and at Roan. Always wearing my vessies. Got them on right now. Love these things. So good. And then, you, I mean, especially for New York with, in the rain and stuff. Ooh, going to need them. L.A. now. Jesus. Rain. I know. Yeah, I know. Ugh. I know. Well, I'm Seasons. I, seasons. Who needs them? Uh, <laughs> but I'll have the seasonal shoes. And I have a lot of great gear now with Rowan as well, too. So you can help the show out by going to any one of our sponsors. I put the links in the description. I always pin the links as the first comment. Okay. I have not talked to Winston yet about the Joker trailer. Allez, dude. Yeah. Chris and I gave our thoughts on, I mean, I, I did the reaction to it, and we had a full conversation on it yesterday. But the the whole, I mean, that episode did really well for us yesterday because we simply asked the question, is it the best trailer of the year so far? What do you think about that? I think that the musical timing was perfect. A lot of the downbeats were on on sh like complete chaos shot changes. Uh, I thought that whoever put that last shot together with the lipstick uh, through the jail window deserves their own TV show. I don't know, like that that was that was like a beautiful shot, and I thought that that was r a great way to end that trailer. Um, and it raised enough questions, but didn't give me too many answers. Mm -hmm. I, I, it officially became. I still think Deadpool and Wolverine is number one for me of yeah. what I'm anticipating. But it shot, but up, it, it shot up to number two immediately. Yeah. Um. And it's now it's almost a one B. Yeah. I'm. I'm so. I'm. I'm so interested to because we we've been hyped for this movie for a bit, but I'm so interested to see. But you said something interesting on the show yesterday. You're like, you know, because you're not. She's openly talked about how she's just not a big fan of the first movie, right? Sure. Doesn't do it for me. No. Sure. But what you said is that, yeah, I'm going to see it. And my, my interest with this one has, it's gone up. Yeah. And because of the musical element of it all. I find the musical element fascinating. I love the idea of shared madness. I think that's really interesting, especially when you go back to original Harley Joker stuff, mm -hmm. right? That mad love story mm -hmm. of how you can corrupt and manipulate somebody to join you in whatever kind of 
bizarre shit you want to get mm -hmm. into. I mean, that's what's always been so compelling about that dynamic is a renowned psychiatrist gets manipulated by yeah. her patient to start committing horrific acts of violence. Right. And herself is abused throughout that relationship, but stays for so long. Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting stuff here. I think the musical choice is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I said yesterday, too. I don't love that they're covers, but I also don't know what kind of original music you write for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just, as I mentioned again yesterday, for me, because we talked about it on the show kind of leading up to it, as long as they don't change the tone of the first movie and make mm. it seem like, oh, well, you know what we're going to do now? Now we're going to do a musical because that'll be – and I'm like, if if they stay consistent to the tone and still make it a musical, and that's what the trailer looks like. It looks consistent with that first movie. It looks like it's all going on in here, and then you're going to get to play the game of how much of it is actually – happening how much of it is actually happening in arkham does he ever really even leave arkham i'm sure there'll be some kind of big reveal at the end of where well, he is in general that was the big cliffhanger with the first one was how much of that was him telling a story so he could break out of arkham and how much of that was actually the truth because there were the inconsistencies of like yeah then i punched thomas wayne in the face and, and I, it was like none, none of this really adds up or makes a lot of sense so again I like the idea that we just might be in his head this entire time, which could also just be very fascinating right. to see how that evolves. Yeah. So we did a full conversation on this yesterday also, and I have my trailer reaction. So if you want to see a little bit more coverage on that one, you can go back and watch any of those videos. You watched yesterday's episode or today. But uh, we're going to move on from that, unless there's anything else, Winston, you want to say about the trailer? Um. I honestly, the only thing I would say, and this has nothing to even do with the musical element, I think Gaga was a great choice. Me too. I think I think the idea, you would never have brought Margot just because it's a completely different vibe, a completely different universe yeah. and all that. I think Gaga was an excellent choice. I think she's going to play off of him masterfully. I really do. I think I, you can already see it. You can already see it in the trailer. I, I'm very curious. Do you think that this is a uh, this is potential for him to get a back-to-back -back Oscar so for this we, character we, so and we, one we, for her as well? We had that conversation on both the show with Steph, myself, and Chris, and we had that conversation on the show <laughs> with Roxy and Brett yesterday. Um, the, it's, we both thought, I think Chris thought I thought, Roxy thought, way more likely for him to get nominated again, mm -hmm. almost nearly impossible for him to win. Just because it would feel too novel type situation? What we were trying to come up with this and no one in the comments could do it either. What, Person when has it ever for happened? Two for the same for character. For the same character. Now, what we did discover, and, we were, and I had guessed it correctly, but we had to do the research on it, was that both Marlon Brando and De Niro one for playing the same character. They both played Vito But not and, an actor doing the same character twice. No. I, so I think, obviously we have to see what she fully brings to the character, not mm -hmm. the trailer. I think there's probably a higher probability that if Gaga gives a performance of a lifetime that she would win it over him, as even though they're not the same category. That if, let's just say, they both got nominated, yeah. they would put odds behind her. But... I would never count Joaquin mm -hmm. Phoenix out because him, like Daniel Day Lewis, like that. Those are the type of like uh, just fully in depth, lose yourself in a character type actors. That if anybody is going to get two Oscars for the same role and like essentially an original it's, and a sequel, he's got the best shot. He's got the best shot. I mean, that's it's going to be very interesting to see if, if it does. And it's coming out at a time where people will remember it because it's in October, whenever it is. So it's like right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of two superhero superhero movies. I say that in quotations too, right. because the comic two offerings movies, yeah. we're getting of comic book movies are so off kilter from what we're used to. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And I think that that's a good change. I think it's needed. Absolutely. All right, moving on. Uh, speaking of the exact opposite of the Joker, <laughs> let's talk about Superman. Director James Gunn did send a video message to CinemaCon attendees from the set of the Superman reboot. We were told to expect something. Superman director James Gunn during Warner Brothers CinemaCon panel, which led to some speculation that we may finally get a first look at Man of Steel. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little longer to see David Corrance what's suited up as the legendary DC Comics hero, but Gunn did send a video message from the set for those in attendance. The filmmaker revealed that the movie's cast would be at next year's CinemaCon to kick off the summer of Superman. Corin Sweat and co-star Rachel Brosnahan also putting in an appearance. He says, can we disclose something? There's a man in a cape, joked the former. Yes, there's at least one man in a cape. Here, they heard it first. The full Superman logo flashed up on the screen at the end of the clip. 
We also have what appears to be a merchandise logo, which was clearly created prior to the movie dropping Legacy from its title. So there's the actual thing that's been up there for a little bit. The company behind the Dune popcorn bucket seems to be also working on movie theater merch for Superman. <laughs> <laughs> that freaking bucket. What kind of bucket for Superman can you put your... <laughs> 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 yeah, put a lot of thinking on this one. It's a, it's the, Super they, they call it the anti-life equation. Yeah. Just... <laughs> oh, it's going to be that horrible plant that would like, <laughs> mess up his memories and stuff. No! The black, no! The black dolly. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so Superman Superman will also star Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. They also say that Millie Alcock's Supergirl is also rumored to make her debut ahead of her own Woman of Tomorrow movie, but that has not been confirmed yet. Not exactly sure how these other superheroes will factor into the story, but Gunn has previously revealed that Superman's dual life as both Clark Kent and Man of Steel will be explored in the film, suggesting that these characters will be his super friends. Whether they'll be part of an actual team or not remains to be seen. To me, what really pops out in all this is the idea that Superman is going to be at CinemaCon next year kicking it off because that'll be in April. The movie mm. comes out in June, I think, mm. June or July. Um, either way. Um, and I love that. It also shows, and granted, one of the reasons that they, they're obviously not having it at Comic-Con because it'll already be out before it hits Comic-Con. But I do think that CinemaCon is more of the place that you want to put these reveals out, as I think we discussed the other day, yeah. because you put your the, the you want to show the theaters what you're doing. You want to show them, and then they're, them them to say, yeah, well, we definitely wanted Superman, but now we really want Superman. Let's let's put more. Let's put let's put yeah. it in as much as possible. So to put it out at CinemaCon, it'll get people hyped up about it in the same way they tried to do for the Flash. It got the hype came out of CinemaCon for the Flash. That that but the hype was at CinemaCon. Yes, it just and stayed then, there, and then it made everyone go. What did you guys see? And I think, this is my theory, because my husband went in my place because I, I had to too. teach yeah, that yeah. night. I think people thought it was unfinished. Definitely. I th And I think then when it was, oh, no, this is what you did. So I still, and I still stand by the fact that I, you don't like the movie. No. I don't <laughs> mind the movie. Um, I think there's a lot wrong with it, but I think there's a lot right with it. I think that. The CGI is atrocious, and I did—it's did, it's atrocious, and I did see it in, and I did have that thought in the theater of saying, "Oh, well, it's just not finished CGI." Wait, 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 wait! What you saw at CinemaCon was the same as what happened at the end. Yeah. Um, oh, the no, very end no, wasn't no, there. The, I mean, I, I'm just no, not the ending. I mean, the CGI and stuff. The yeah. CGI with the baby stuff was all the same. Yeah. It's all the same. Well, I, I mean, it was bad. I get that. I just thought when you described it, I was imagining it was literally just like the vector lines. No, like they just the genuinely they, weren't they done. It wasn't changed at all. I, the only thing that they changed, I think that we didn't have the reveal of of um, Clooney of Clooney at the end mm -hmm. when I went. You had somebody else, didn't you? No, I didn't have any. I didn't was, have anything. It was, I think it, it just, was just nothing. Just went, oh. It just went oh. dark. Yeah. But I had heard different things about that. Ending. I heard they shot one with Robert Pattinson. I heard they had shot one with a bunch of different people. But it just, it's like poor Clooney. Clooney's always the one that gets like they shot one with Michael Keaton again. They shot and and they used they used Clooney. Uh, but anyway, the whole point of it is that that gonna, was the best part of the movie to me. It was fine. <laughs> but I didn't mind. It. I didn't. And I watched it. I watched it with my wife afterwards too. There and I and the stuff, the emotional beats in that movie, I thought. Sure. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, the question is what they're going to actually show at Superman. What they're going to bring forward to it. But the revealing this logo. Are you hyped for Superman? I am. Yeah. I like Superman, and I think that we've had a a very big Superman-shaped hole in the WB lineup lately. Mm -hmm. I think he needs to be present there. I love the logo. Anything that harkens back to Kingdom Come, to Alex Ross, is mm -hmm. really, really great in my book. And that's a lot of the iconography that's been inspiring to James mm -hmm. Gunn, it seems, based on his Twitter feed. I'm excited about it. And I think David Cornswit is going to be a really great Clark. I do, too. I think that if you watched, I think it was Hollywoodland on Netflix, mm. uh, the that was a great show. And he is just so... Earnest and corn fed. Okay, that's and good. And I think that's what you need in a super. Probably how he got the job. I think so. Yeah. I mean, he looks the part. It's probably a. We got billions. We can make you. We can make you jacked. We yeah. just need yeah. to. We need to make sure that the the Smallville Kansas boy is like there. Mm -hmm. You know. And so I'm here for it. I, I haven't seen Hollywood Land, but I'll check it out. But you pumped up for this movie? Yeah. I mean, I I've been very vocal that Superman's not really high up on my list of heroes that I care that much about. I tend to find him personally relatively boring but i think that there are two very important things i think one we really as a world and as a society right now we need somebody that's going to inspire some hope and like a, a little bit more kind of uh, just the idea that 
the world can be better. Mm -hmm. And that's always been Superman's kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing that I have always said, and those are the Superman stories I get interested in, is it's not the ones about what can Superman do, it's what should Superman do. Mm -hmm. And so if we're getting into this whole idea of well, heroes kind of exist and here comes Superman and like, I'm assuming the heroes aren't doing stuff maybe the best way that they can. Either they're not saving people or they're cutting corners. Like if you've got Guy Gardner, like he's he's a good lantern, but he's a piece of <laughs> So like I wouldn't be surprised if like Superman's like, we can do this a better way. And if that's kind of what's going to happen here, I'm, I'm actually here for it. Okay. What's interesting about that is we already know that our villain is going to be a member of the authority. Mm -hmm. And we already have that juxtaposition, right, of – oh no, I have absolute power, so I should get to rule absolutely and mm -hmm. course correct everyone else because you all are weak and you make bad choices and I should fix that. And then you have somebody like Clark who grew up amongst everybody with, well, I shouldn't just do whatever I want because I can. Right. That seems messed up. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Agreed. So what do you guys think? You think it's the right choice to put? What do you think about the logo, first of all? But what do you think about putting it at CinemaCon? I mean, whatever they're going to put at CinemaCon, your overall thoughts. Okay, put your comments in there. And before we move on, I know that it is it is CinemaCon and it is Vegas, so people getting drunk. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what they should be doing, though. They should have taken Z-Biotics with them. If they did, they're going to have a much better CinemaCon. Let me tell you about Z-Biotics. The other thing you want to check out is Z-Biotics. And Z-Biotics, thank God I went to a wedding last night, and Z-Biotics is the reason that I am able to be here with you today. Um, they are the maker of the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It, you got to take your f first drink of the night for a better tomorrow. Fact. It's engineered by a team of microbiologists, and Zbiotics is a pro probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol, which is responsible for rough mornings after drinking. So you have a Zbiotic for the best results. You take your first drink of the night before you do anything else. You pace yourself, you hydrate, and you get a good night's sleep. And then you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. I love it. It is game changer. I'm not young enough to be able to just do what I did when I was younger. Don't do it anymore. I take Zbiotic. I'm feeling good today. And every time I have a Zbiotic before drinks, I notice a difference the next day. Even a night out, I can confidently plan on it and doing shows. I'm moving. So I gave Zabiotics a try when they first came to the show. I drank it uh, last night before this wedding, and I'm telling you, I'm top of my game right now. You wouldn't even be able to tell uh, that I was drinking last night. So this year, I'm going to form a more sustainable and better me podcast and doing all this stuff. This is not a all or nothing approach. So you got to go to zbiotics.com slash big thing and use that code big thing. You check out for 15% off. And thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and for all the good times. All right. Happy to have Zbiotics with us. Really excited that so many people have been trying it. Got a lot of messages yesterday about people who, who got Zbiotics and were very happy with it. So links in the description. Make sure you check it out. Okay. A couple other uh, stories here. The Crow, the reboot, is delayed. Lionsgate de delays it as Saw 11 is also pushed back by more than a year. Lionsgate has made some changes to its 2024 slate. It has now shifted the Crow reboot to later in the summer and delayed the next installment of Saw by more than a year. With CinemaCon in full swing, Lionsgate has revealed that the Crow and Saw 11 have been hit by release date delays. The Crow was supposed to come out on June 7th. Now it moves to August 23rd, leaving the reboot to share that weekend with Blink Twice and The Forge neither which should be very strong competition. It's likely a wise move by Lionsgate as the crow flies away from bad boys, ride or die, ballerina, hitman, and the watchers in what looks to be a surprisingly busy June weekend for new releases. While the trailer splits opinions, world out of CinemaCon is that the reboot might be better than expected. There is a thing here from Eric Davis, it's from Fandango, who says, new at CinemaCon, I'm all in on the crow. We just watched an exceptionally violent and R-rated extended look, and it's ruthless. This one's going to go hard. Also hearing really good buzz on it. Okay, so The Crow, it gets pushed, gets moved. Do I think it is a good move? Yes, that competition was going to knock it into the ground. Now, we watched this trailer the, for The Crow, myself, Winston, and Coy, <laughs> and we felt like we were the only three people on the planet that, that enjoyed it. it. Now, I love <laughs> I love the original movie. It's one of my favorites. I love that movie. And it's not 
trying to be that. And yes, I do think that the makeup looks a bit silly, but I thought it looked brutal. I'm still going to say that I'm, I'm interested in it. Not thrilled. I mean, the director eh, is it Rupert Sanders. Is it, eh. um, but Skarsgård, I like a lot. Pushing it into August, this movie seems like it should have always been an August movie. It always it seems like it is a summer movie that that it's usually the way it always works is that the summer movies that they think could have a shot but might not do it, let's put it in August. That's what this movie seems like it should have been in the first place. But you said you were excited about the uh, uh, you like this trailer? I like the trailer. I like yeah. the trailer because I I really am not a big crow franchise okay. person to begin with. But this looks promising, I think, especially if you are looking for something that is a hyper-violent revenge mm -hmm. story, which is what it is. Yeah. And it feels like it's going to deliver that. Winston? Yeah, you, I, I mean, I, I have intentionally still not seen the OG because, totally -watch, because of yeah. just just to be the control, essentially, and like I'll watch the the new one first, and then I'll go back and watch the OG. We might watch the Oh, you want to do that first? I was thinking oh, that, like, that's what we were saying as far yeah. as as far as watch a control first, because because oh, okay. everybody yeah, yeah, else yeah, feels yeah, so yeah. strongly. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, by moving it, I think it's a. You could make the argument, well, they're moving because they don't have confidence in it. I mean, yeah, I think it's fair to say that, and I think, but I also think that it would be smart if they're like, well, we have confidence and we think it's a good revenge action film, but we don't have enough confidence that it's going to be able to take on ballerina. You don't well, think that it, I don't. That's I don't the John Wick spinoff. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Anna Darmus. Yeah. That makes more sense. And okay. they showed that yeah. too. Okay. Um, and isn't it? And aren't they both Lionsgate? I think they're are both they? Lionsgate. I don't know, but I but but you throw but you throw ballerina. So now that I know what that is, yeah, that's you don't want to go up against that. But you also I, I yeah, both you don't also don't want to go up against Bad Boys. To be honest with and you, Bad Boys, right? You like, know, <laughs> it's like get, you, you get out of there, and yeah. you, you have a better like you have a better shot in August. Than you do in June against those movies, so that it's it, that's a very smart move. Um, but it doesn't take away that they thought maybe we looked the way people reacted to that trailer, and we don't know. I don't think there's going to be a lot of interest behind it. So let's take a shot in August. So I, I think it was a very smart move. But what do you guys think? Do you think it was a smart move? Do you think they should have stayed in June? Do you not give two craps about the crow? Put <laughs> your comments in there. Let me know what you think. Fair or not. Chloe Zhao's Eternals is seen as the film that first showed a real chink in the Marvel Studios armor. Domestically, it was the lowest grossing film of the MCU pandemic movies, and it still sets as their second worst reviewed Marvel film to date. <sighs> Despite its rather public failure, there have been plenty of rumors regarding a possible sequel or continuation of some key characters and other projects. One person who's been the subject of such speculation is former Game of Thrones star Kit Harrington, who starred in the film as Dane Whitman, a character who eventually becomes the hero of the Black Knight. Out promoting his film, Blood for Dust, Harrington tells the playlist that as far as he's aware, all that talk is unsustained as there is nothing going on with that character. I have always been intrigued by that character, and it's one of the main reasons I came into the Eternals, the, the character. For, any, for anyone who knows the Black Knight, his descent because of his superpower, I think it's a brilliant allegory about addiction and things, and I think it's a really cool character and a really cool story that they haven't mined yet. But I don't know whether they will. Like, honestly, I've heard nothing about any sort of plans, and I know they would always keep their plans close to their chest. But at the moment, again, on that front, nothing going on. And then he was asked if he'd prefer to reprise the character in either a series or a movie. Harrington says he'd be more than happy to come back. I don't know, to be honest. I, would, I wouldn't I would know until I got shown what the plans were, was if there was a plan. So I think if there's a sort of strange, murky area now, TV and film, I don't know. But both could be the right thing or the wrong thing. But I think that the character is there and the story is there to do something really interesting with it. Um, this also follows the fact that the Jon Snow sh show is no longer happening. So yeah. Kit's having a rough week with the projects. Bad week for I him. I know, for sure. Just, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's the eclipse. Yeah, that's, that's what everybody it's because says, Mercury's in retrograde. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> number of women who have said that to me this week have made me so uncomfortable. Yeah, there, 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 somebody said that. Somebody said something. It's like I, you know, everybody says the Mercury in retrograde. I don't remember what she said. She's like, oh, it's like Pluto is now in what? Well, Pluto's been in this for this long, but now it's in that. So that means that everything is about to turn on its ear. And when I was I, like, well, when I hear you guys talk about the things that people are saying, it really. Puts into perspective how much I love my new philosophy that I don't pay attention to anything anymore. <laughs> like I really love it. I really love that I don't know. I, I, I don't have resting listening face though, so yeah. we're <laughs> constantly. <laughs> they're just like, let me tell you about this, and I'm like, 
Okay. okay. Right. For sure. <laughs> you do, you do you kind of give off like like uh, enchanted. <laughs> like it's like princess vibes be like oh my god i feel like i could tell you everything oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. all the answer you're like oh fuck. it is it is <laughs> um all right so this this character though um i'd like to see him come back i was hoping he would do more in the movie and it clearly were setting and setting him up to do more and then they had that scene where i guess that blade that shows up at yeah, the end it's definitely kind of, his voice yeah, yeah. i just, i'm actually rewatching phase 4 cuz i was just like is it as bad as like we were saying? And it's something that I'm actually gonna do on my channel. I'll talk about that later. I don't but think it is. I don't think. It I is think as the bad Eternals says. answered some really, or not answered, but asked some really interesting questions. I like the Eternals. I do think Phase Four is a letdown. It, and it's been some big swings and misses. Yeah. But I think the Eternals itself was a really cool project mm -hmm. that I think is a necessary movie because we have had these very black and white ideas of what do you do? You you stop this person who's trying to eliminate you know, half the universe because of resources and materials. Oh, that's a bad thing to do. That's genocide. That's horrible. And then you have other people who go, wait, hold on a second. Let's think about some of these mm -hmm. things and these ratifications and how we can actually prolong humanity and other things. Now, does that make it the correct argument? No, but it is an interesting posture, just like the Superman thing mm -hmm. of when do you get involved? What's your business and how much of other people's business is it your responsibility to take care of? Yeah, the fact that the fact that because so I that's I'm in the middle of No Way Home right now, but I just so I just finished Eternals. And the simple fact of like you said, did the no, our direct is just the deviants. They got to figure the rest of their ish out. Yeah. And then when you don't. You end up with uh, Fastius accidentally giving them the nuclear bomb and him having a full meltdown. And the only thing that I wish would have happened is if Oppenheimer had some sort of like connection to it. Uh, and he just came yeah. in and was like, here you go, Brad. Well, it was before it was, that movie came out before, so they didn't know he was working on it. Yeah. Um, but I would rather watch that movie a, a hundred times in a row than have to watch the Marvels again. To be honest with you, Damn. like yeah, I like I think this is a way better movie than the Marvels, and this is way better than a few other movies. It's the, the fact that it's the second lowest of all time—that's crazy. That's wild to me. I, I I've only so I'm only watching the movies. I'll come back to the TV shows because that's just way more time than I'm willing to commit right now. But I'm just watching the movies, and I've only gotten through what is that now three and a half. And so far, none of them are misses. Like Black Widow, I I, they, I don't it's love just, what they did with it's Taskmaster. Dull. It's just dull. I, I, I actually rewatching it. I actually found it incredibly fascinating. It's just yeah. you ruined a character in Taskmaster that was is an incredible villain. Yeah, well, so the, I hated that. That movie also came out way too late. They yes, should, they, that movie. Yes. that movie should have come out three years before it did. Fully yeah. agree yeah. with that. Yeah. But then Shang Chi, like the little hangups that I had with the father, I I fully take all that back. That movie is fantastic. I love that movie. Um, and then Eternals is great. The only thing that like made me pause for a minute because then we started to get into this territory. I was like, this shit almost three hours. But it. But other than that, it was it was a masterclass in my opinion. There's a reason why Chloe pitched it. And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. Did I say that with you? I feel like no, it, you went so, with Koi. Koi. So yeah. Koi. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's. Shang Chi is another one for me that it's like, I loved that movie up until the end, because it it really, that movie was relying on it being like a cool kind of martial arts film, father and son story, and then like, but we gotta have it. It's gotta have a Marvel ending. Put a big silly dragon flying around the CGI and and make a big big spectacle. Got to do that. And it's like, eh. yeah, it I mean, a, but it's 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 Dormammu again. Because it was the same, it was the same thing in Doctor Strange. It was that it's the the philosophy and with Cassilius and all that, the dad was being controlled by that demon the whole time because he thought it was the it wife. Just... So it's so I get what you're saying. That's technically also a Marvel ending, but it's Dormammu in a different flavor. Sure. Um, <laughs> fine. I, I felt, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, that it's that movie. Is, there's that. I think the thing with Phase Four is that there's not a lot of them that I want to go back and rewatch. As opposed to I've rewatched a bunch of other. Marvel MCU movies before and would go back and watch a bunch of them, but like No Way Home definitely. Um Chung Chi, you know, once is fine. Um Wow. Eternals, I've I really liked it, but do I have to go see it again? I don't know. Uh let's see the, the TV shows, She Hulk, please never put it near my television ever again. <laughs> Um, the WandaVision, definitely watch that again. Loved WandaVision. Thought mm -hmm. WandaVision was fantastic. Um Falcon Winter Soldier. I like. I liked it, but I don't necessarily know if I need to watch it again. But mm -hmm. I, but I, I did like that show Moon more Knight? than most. Moon Knight, I liked more than most people. Moon, Moon Knight for me, the the last episode was horrible. Yeah. 
the second to last episode was incredible. One of the best yes. episodes of Marvel yeah. ever. That's why those short runs are so silly. I know. Like, why are you giving me six to eight episodes? Tell That's your whole it. story. Tell me the whole story. And then uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Marvel's no thank you. Hawkeye. Miss Marvel. Okay. Ms. Marvel's great. Ms. Marvel, Ms. Marvel, when the, but same type of thing that I, same issue I have with Shang Chi with Ms. Marvel, when they focus on the character stuff and the family stuff, it's my favorite stuff. I love that stuff. The superhero stuff in Ms. Marvel is like, eh, it's fine. Um, the, what was the other one that you mentioned? You just mentioned one. Uh, oh no, you mentioned Hawkeye. Hawkeye, Hawkeye to me was I, I didn't I didn't love Hawkeye as much there, as much as everyone else did. I liked her a lot. Um, oh yeah, and then Echo. No thanks. Um. Yeah. What? what? I, I Echo, I thought it. was good until you got to the end. Is it? They're, 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 have a, you'd, they have a lot you'd of. You'd want to rewatch that again? I would rewatch the first four episodes, and then mm. I would be like, "I'm done. I don't need to watch the last two. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. And then I'm trying to think. If there's any other? What else came out? That uh, uh, Werewolf Strange. by Night. Werewolf, Werewolf by, by Night. Which that one great. I would watch again. Doctor Strange, Ant Man, yeah. yeah. Guardians. Yes. Yes. Every time I want to be sad yes. and clutch my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Guard, Guardians 3 is one of my favorite MCU And the movies. holiday yeah. special, which oh, I, yeah. I did holiday like. I do love watching yes. that. So yeah. there are a few, mm -hmm. but not. But then if you go back through like phases one through three, there's like most of them are yes. Yeah. yeah. Even 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 Thor: Dark World, I have watched four times. I've seen People four times. shit on that movie. I like that. Yeah. Movie. It's good. I it has really good great. moments. I, I, I'm with you. I like it. <laughs> I like it better than it. most. It's not good. You. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. And you better take it back now. Uh, when we went, we went, we went and saw, we went and saw I that. I Love and Thunder yet. We went and saw that piss piece, uh, Love and Thunder, which I hate. <laughs> I hate that movie. And I, oh, I it, set myself up for failure with that movie. Yeah. I was quoting gore going into it. I was like, uh, I have been baptized in the blood of the gods. I have because you expected a real movie. Yeah. Not a Saturday Night Live movie. And I remember turning to him afterwards, and I said. Uh, I said, uh, Dark World is what, way better than this movie. He's like, you take that back. And he's like, you, he's like no way. And I haven't like, gotten to it yet. Just it, chill, bro. This movie stinks. Just and then chill. the Civil Movies. War logo just dropped between yeah. the two of you. Yeah. <laughs> that movie stinks. It's a stinky, stinky movie. It's, it's so bad. It's one of the worst. You the love worst. the goats. I do love the goats. I do <laughs> love the goats. You hate the people at the screening, but you love, I love the goats. The goats. The goat, I do love the goats. I do love those goats. Backtracking tremendously. Yes. Um, I, there's obviously no way that Dane's going to make an appearance, though, before we have a Blade movie, and that is in limbo. So I don't know. How dare you stick to the topic at hand? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. If he, back. Yeah, if he shows up, it might be in in that at a post credit scene, but it doesn't even look like that's even they've even asked him to do that yet. Who knows what that movie that we're going to see him see what, Blade? What what they need to do is do the Blade movie, and then and then if you really hell bent on doing a Doctor Strange three, then that needs to be like Doctor Strange of the Midnight Suns. And Ooh, then go that go. route. Okay. Um, if we, I mean, who knows where we're going to see another Doctor Strange movie either? Charlie Theron, they put her in that scene, and then it's like that's same thing with the, the Harry Styles. Because just rewatching re yeah. the Eternals, I yeah. was like, oh, there's Star Fox. <laughs> like, <No. laughs> I, I'm, you know how many beeps I've got to do for you this episode? <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us here today. Appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank the panel for being here first. Chris Carr, where can I find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram at Chris Carr. Uh, you can find me uh, at Speak Friend Studio where I teach voiceover and I produce voiceover demos. And if you want to hear me do some voiceover and you're into comics, and of course you are, you're listening to the show, you can catch me in Marvel Move. I play Madam Mask so you can get a workout in while I'm doing <laughs> in Hell's Kitchen. Be both of you. And Winston <laughs> A. Marshall, where can they find you? You can find me at the Swaggy Blurred on all platforms, man. I've been uh, really ramping up my content over my YouTube channel. Uh, we're taking, we're not, we're not Christian, all right? So we're not like, we're going for 200,000. We're going for 2,500, all right? Do if we're doing for, huh? <laughs> well, but, but the numbers she are moving. I, I didn't even hear it. That's why I just looked at you and said, hey? but that's fine. The point is, come on over, man. Check it out. Um, I, what I've really been doing is as we're talking about X-Men 97, I've been doing like full deep dives, connecting it to the comics, where the kind of lore is, talking about some philosophy, stuff like that. So that's been a good time. Uh, it's really comedy and commentary over there. So come on over and say what's up. And if you want to help out and you want to help us get to 200,000 subscribers, hit that button. Uh, help us out. It will do the job when you hit that button. Boop. That's all you got to do. And, and scream that out loud. Say boop when you do it. The other thing is that if you haven't, if you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at the Amazon list, please do. Maybe you can help us out. Maybe you can't. Either way, take a look at what we're trying to do with the New York studio. Thanks again. I want to thank Chris and Winston for being here today. We'll see you later. Bye. I always forget I'm going to be honest. <laughs>